and it'll be England to start. Steve Hilditch of Ireland, the headmaster of Belfast High School, is in charge, supported by Brian Carling and Owen Doyle, the two touch judges. He checks his watch. Cusworth waits. And the crowd anticipates a mighty battle between these traditional rivals. Cusworth of Leicester and England to get this 93rd meeting between Wales and England underway. No, indeed, it's the fullback Webb. And the first touch of the game to Tony Clement, and it's not a bad one. Rifle that a good 35 metres down towards the halfway line into the sunshine. He'll be well pleased with that first touch of the ball. Tony Clement winning his second cap for Wales. The very first line out, seven at the tail for England is Winterbottom. England, Harry Bredegwegos, Collins looking for the support up towards the 10 metre line. Jones has sighted the ball, and England go over the top, but down they go for a scrum on the 10 metre line. Last man up for England, Melville, the scrum half, winning his 11th cap. A much seasoned front row for England in Rendell, Moore and Probin. But Wales have it. Robert Jones, Jonathan Davis, where they both they miss out a man to Tony Clement, and it's under Yayan Evans. Yayan Evans up towards the 22 metre line. Tackled by Webb on the 22. But the ball nearly made available. Well, that was encouraging, with Evans showing that dynamic pace of his. Tremendous play by the Welsh, a good solid scrum, and they move the ball straight away, letting Anthony Clement come into the lane, good pass to Evans, and only desperate defence kept the flying wingman out. And it'll be Brian Moore to throw in once again. No, indeed, Kevin Phillips, Welsh throw in. Willie really got his hands to that one. It could be England ball as Melville waits. And then have it, Cusworth. That's the test for Clement or for Yayan Evans. A little bit of confusion in the Welsh ranks. Evans gets the ball away to Clement. But England on the charge, but Clement's still going. Well, he recovered well. Tony Clement, a little bit of indecision in the Welsh defence that time. And that was the test we did expect from Les Cusworth. A perfect up and under, good following by Underwood. A bit of confusion with Evans and Clement, but a good recovery by the Swansea youngster. England throw, limited line out. They had John Norwin at the tail, Wade Dooley at front, as well as have Phil May and Rob Norster at the back. It's a long moment for Norwin. Ring is there, though. Moriarty takes for Wales, as Wales set it up midway between the 22 and the halfway line. Jones to Jonathan Davis. The switch, probing, looking. The ball taken by Harrison, the England captain. He's got away from the tackle of Tony Clement, and is Harrison still going? This a good England attack as Melville waits for the feed to Cusworth on to Widow Bottom. Now to Carling. Carling caught in the middle. Norster tries to get a hand to it. It is so fast down there, so physical. And we see that England are willing to play the expansive game as well. A misdirected kick from Jonathan Davis, and immediately Mike Harrison's first thoughts were to move the ball. And we can see they've won the ruck, they move, they've got men o over here, but they're not one of them really going straight, they're drifting across. Carlin tries to go outside, but a tremendous tackle in the Welsh centre, halts the movement there, the ball goes down, and Wales are there far quicker, Paul Moriarty, good coming, and the movement ends. Melville with a feed, good attacking position. Harrison lurking on the short side. There's the drive from England, the Welsh scrum in a spot of other. And that's four to five metres that the England scrum have won. Tremendous drive. Melville out to Sims, the half break, and Ring got a hand to it. A couple of knock ons, but it's all allowed to go on as Hilditch waits for the advantage. Jonathan Davis's fly hack. Play on, says referee Hilditch. Harrison picks up for England. 
on the halfway line for the 10 meter line just looking for that support back inside it comes to Skinner as Melville waits it's all action to Cusworth up to John Webb he's got Underwood outside if he can find him back inside Winterpart will fail to get hold of the ball Collins is there for Wales all of the bodies strewn all over the place players on their knees and certainly one thing could be said this match has not lacked pace And there you see England looking to move the ball. There's a huge long pass by Les Kesworth. And John Webb's come in. He's a very elusive runner. Tries to go on the outside. But again, good defensive play by Mark Ring, who just holds on to him. There's a support play of Winterbottom. But there's where the ball is knocked forward. Kevin Phillips of Neath, the sixth international. And there'll be a huge cheer from the Grant contingent if Ian Watkins of Evervale is called on as a replacement. So the throw-in, this will be an interesting one for Staff Jones and Ian Watkins, a great moment for the youngster from Ebbelvale, winning his first cap. He's on the replacement bench against the American Eagles. Great mobility with the youngster from Ebbelvale. Phil May hands down on to Roland Phillips. The charge is on from Moriarty, but Wells not making much ground. But Robert Jones has it. Jonathan Davis to ring, Brendan Bowen, and just a fingertip away from good possession. But just go back to Watkins, who came on there. Tremendous bit of play by Watkins, because from the first line out, he's got to get his thrown in very accurate, and he found Phil May straight away. Good play by the Abbeville man. Brendan Bowen shouts the instructions to his fellow three quarters. Put away coming and probing on the charge. And over the 10 meter line. This is good work by England. Melville has good sight of the ball onto Winterbottom. Tries to take on Collins. They're playing basketball in the middle, and suddenly it's Moriarty. On to Richard Collins, and he is a basketball player. On goes Collins towards the halfway line. Wales have it. It's Roland Phillips on the far side. And the ball picked up by Jonathan Davis. He's got Clement outside. Jonathan Davis. Is he going to get there all over his own tackle short of the line? And the ball comes to England's hands, and that's the best scoring opportunity for Wales. And what a superb break, and he may well have been injured in the process. A tremendous play by Roland Phillips here, getting the ball, moving it, and look at that pass, brilliantly taken by Jonathan Davis. And here's the first chance, he's had a little bit of room, and just watch him use his pace. Dean Richards hasn't got a hope of catching him, shows a half dummy, and it's odds on that he's going to score. But again, magnificent defence by England. Webb gets back there to halt the fly-in, fly-off, and Cousworth does a cleaning-up job. Phillips does very, very well. But just watch this taken in the pass by Davis. Grabs it from behind, and then he goes on the outside run. Beautiful half dummy. And look, 22 metres ago, you'd put your money on Davis. But Webb, shown tremendous pace, gets back there and pulls off a superb tackle. And England back in numbers. Cousworth very relieved to get the ball into touch. Steve Hilditch checks his watch for the second half. Mark Ring is ready. So too are Wales as the ball drops for Dooley. Dooley slipping the ball back neatly to Orwin. But it's difficult ball for Melville. Richards will have to salvage as Wales drive through. That's a good drive by the Welsh. As Jones waits on the short side, ready for the relieving kick to touch by Melville or Cusworth. Cusworth hasn't quite found touch. Clement takes possession on the halfway line. The up and under is meant to test his opposite number, John Webb. Webb takes, calls for the mark. Certain air of confidence about John Webb's display. Men from the north, now the medical student at Bristol. Webb safely into touch. So England will be a little bit annoyed after that first half fill that they haven't got points on the board. Yes, they had a few chances really, but it's, it's worth noting there was only one shot a goal, one penalty kick a goal, which Mark Ring missed. Really exciting play by both teams, but as I keep on saying, some excellent defence, but I can't see them keeping each other out for the next 40 minutes. Ian Watkins, short and line out, called by Wales, 10 metres short of the 22 metre line. Phil May wins the ball, Jonathan Davies on to Roland Phillips. On to Richie Collins, but they haven't gone over the game line. David Young gets the ball back to Robert Jones. That's a kick for Webb. 
which he'll marshal into the dead ball area. So Robert Jones, possibly that time, wasting hard one possession for Wales. Cusworth to restart. Robert Jones, his 18th cap. This man there's Cusworth, his 12th. Ball falls for Norster. Dooley went through, but it's Moriarty on the charge. On the short side, the grubber kick does well, gains a little bit of ground for Wales. Steve Holdridge having a look to see how much space there is between the warring factions in that line-out. Owen Doyle is the touch judge on the far side. Watkins with the throw. Noster takes that well for Wales. Moriarty turns around, but they don't gain any ground that time. So Wales really have to get over the advantage line, get over the gain line to give that drive some kind of authority. Robert Jones waits. Jonathan Davis, Mark Ring, and Ring taking it. Uh, Really nowhere but Robert Jones calling the options, Jonathan Davis, and the tackle by Skinner, a hard one on Jonathan Davis. And rather noticeable in that movement, Phil Bennett, that Jonathan Davis was merely a passenger, was hobbling around, hardly able to walk. Yes, he took the ball beautifully and gave it out in one uh, action, but it was noticeable again how quick both back rows were there to snuff the moves out. Ryan Moore with the throw. England win and the cleaning up work being done by Probin. Melville waiting for the feed, but it's the field drive, and Melville will advance his face. This night on Melville up against Tony Clement. Melville going for the corner. Has he got the speed to get there on his own? Looking for support. Evans comes back with a crucial tackle. Ring is there, and Ring is upended, and surely that's a penalty. A superb break by Nigel Melville. What a magnificent run from this man who's supposed to be injured and has got a sore ankle, tries to go outside Clement, tremendous pace, but again, good covering by Clement, gets back there, and look at number 13, Mark Ring, he did ever so well to rescue the situation as well for Wales. Watkins to throw. It's taken by Norster, he's having a commanding role in the second half. Jonathan Davis, Mark Ring, they miss out a man to Tony Clement, and he's robbed of the ball by Harrison. The ball comes to Richard Collins. He'll need the support. England will try and turn him around, which they've succeeded in doing so. Harrison to Cosworth. Sims to Carling at the far side. Underwood up against Ryan Evans. Underwood trying to go around the fleshy man. But that time, it's even Stevens. And what a battle these two wings have had. Two exceptionally talented wings in Rory Underwood for England and Ryan Evans of Wales. A momentary pause, and one can understand some of these players welcoming these pauses. Ian Watkins to throw. England on the attack, some two or three metres outside the Welsh 22, but Wales now beginning to win some decent line-out possession. Jonathan Davis, being challenged that time by the England hooker. Number two, Brian Moore. Yes, tremendous pressure on Davis there. Moore came through on him on the narrow side, and he had went to bottom, breathing down, down him on the outside. Still nil-nil as Melville sweeps the ball away to Cusworth. That's a testing kick for Tony Clement. Takes it well and makes space. Tony Clement on the run, trying to link up. Finds Brethren Bowen. Bowen trying to find Richie Collins. Suddenly, the movement breaking down in midfield, but Wales have it, and they have an overlap. Jonathan Davis to Mark Ring, to Tony Clement, he's got Hadley outside. Adrian Hadley up against John Webb, back to Mark Ring, to Adrian Hadley. Hadley will go for the line, Hadley's going to score. What a try! What a try! And what a combination between Mark Ring and Adrian Hadley of Lady Mary High School in Cardiff. 
A magnificent try. A magnificent play by the Welsh backs. Clement has started it all, and it's all about good street running and support play. Look at Clement using his pace. Lovely play by Hadley, a good support play by Markering. But look at the intelligence of Hadley. Comes back on the scissors, and then he straightens the line back out, showing tremendous pace, and he's over for a magnificent Welsh try. Here we can see it again. You see ruck ball. And it's come out, and Jonathan Davis uses it well. Good straight handling by the back, simple stuff. And there's Clement adding his pace to it. But Hadley could have easily gone outside and been tackled, but he looked for the support, and there's the scissors. And look at his angle of running out, straightening him back out, bleeding Bowen, roaring him on, and he's over for a great try. Well, plenty of confidence in the Welsh three quarters. Adrian Hadley, the hero of Wales's battle against Australia in the World Cup, which gained them third place. Now the hero of Twickenham, Steve Hildjuch. Asking Nigel Melville to readjust the England scrum slightly. Back it comes to Webb. Very nearly charged down by Robert Jones. Well, that's a massive kick from John Webb of Bristol. And that'll give his forward some encouragement to get back into the battle. Travelling a goodly distance of some 45 metres. referee asking for some separation Ian Watkins uh, beginning to find his men in this Welsh line out the lob ball looking for Norstad finding the big Cardiff man as well and awakens Robert Jones onto Richie Collins bowls over Cusworth and it comes to David Young the young mobile prop from Swansea on the short side to Jonathan Davis the switch of attack being chased by Skinner Ring is on the far side, if Jonathan Davis can give the ball to Ring now. Ring in possession, Tony Clement in front of his man. Ring looking back inside for Paul Moriarty. Finding the man, Collins to Rob Norster. The pass out to Brendan Bowen, Brendan Bowen back inside to Adrian Hadley. Is he going to get his second try? Hadley's going to make it! The second try for Adrian Hadley! And all the Wales at Twickenham erupts! Oh my word, it didn't look on, but they made the most of it. Here's the key to the whole movement, the switch back by Jonathan Davis, and look at him using his tremendous pace. He's beating Skinner on the outside, and he, he draws the man, but Mark Ring does very well. He comes back in on the inside, looking for support, but the crucial moment comes here. He's tackled, but he still makes the ball available by throwing it out, and good play by the forwards. They deserve all the credit in the world here. They keep it alive. Bleden Bowen's there, and look at the work done again by Hadley, getting the ball, beats one tackle the English captain, Cusman seems to have him, but he shows strength there, and he's going into the corner for another great try for Wales. Adrian Hadley, very much the hero of the hour. Ball won by Wales, and Roland Phillips doing cleaning up work so efficiently for Wales. Jonathan Davis has seen a bit of a gap on the short side. Thinks again, and the high Gary Owen is for Webb. Ball coming back on the England side. Carling is in the middle. Wales trying to turn the England centre around. But the ball will not come out of there, says Hilditch, and it's a Welsh put in. What's the odds here in front of the post, 20 metres out? We said before the interval that Jonathan Davis had injured his leg. I wonder will he seal this with a drop goal here, or will he go for the attacking option on that narrow side? Two attempts at a drop goal so far from Jonathan Davis. This could well be the third. Robert Jones, Jonathan Davis, the drop goal. Is it there this time? It's there. No doubt about it this time. Third time for a Welshman, and it's between the posts. And look at that scrum, rock solid all the time. They will look at Davis, takes his time, lines it up, and strokes through the ball beautifully. And the moment it left his boot, it was going to be three points for Davis and Wales. 11 points to nil to Wales. Having survived the England onslaught in the first half, Wales coming back strongly in the second. Wales then could well be heading for their 11th victory at Twickenham since the matches were played there since 1910. But this is a penalty. Kind of uh, indiscipline giving away penalties could well bring England back into this game. Rob Bostep. Having a quick word with the Irish referee. So what are England going to do? They may well run it. Or 
No, indeed, they're going to go for three. That's the decision of the skipper, Mike Harrison. John Webb then, and should he get this one over? We them points to three, so England will still have to come back and score a goal plus another score to take the lead. Webb with a kick. It looks a comfortable one. It's over. It's 11 points to three. And again, we see England having to rely on the penalty kick. Certainly, that facet of play dominating international rugby over the past 20 years. Ian Watkins, what day it's going to be for him to remember. Debut at Twickenham and in a winning Welsh side, at least looks like that at the moment. But England hoping to come back. Melville onto Skinner. But the tackling of the Welsh is there. Cusworth out to Carling, Carling on the far side to Underwood. Underwood is going to make tracks. Underwood back inside, under Peter Winterbottom. Norster is there, though, going over the ball, because back to the Welsh side, and the possibility of the counter-attack to Brethin Bowen. Bowen looking for the support. Robert Jones playing basketball. Here's the try scorer, Hadley. And Hadley will go chase, so too will Collins. But the bounce defeats Hadley and Collins, but excellent recovery by Wales. And I can tell you, it's breathless just watching the game up here. There was an occasion there where I thought Bledy Bowen inside his 22 could have stuck it safely to touch, but no, again showing this tremendous enterprise adventure, wanting to run the ball. Moriarty. There's the drive to Jonathan Davis. The dummy move on to Clement, Tony Clement. And about a yard in front of Yayan Evans on that far side. The pass forward, but that's the final whistle from Steve Hilditch. It's a Welsh victory at Twickenham. The hero of the hour, no doubt, Adrian Hadley. And Wales on limited opportunities, making the most of them. And Wales winning the first of their five Nations Championship matches. But there's the man from Lady Mary High School in Cardiff who deserves to have quite a celebration this evening at the headquarters of Rugby Football.